initial ventures into the playoffs are a baptism by fire. The atmosphere is different. It's new to us. It's hard to mimic this in practice. You must adjust between the lines. The physicality is different. The pace is different. It's all new to me. And between the ears. you got to have a short memory. The only day that matters is today. Move on to what's next. For the Celts and Pelicans, next must be the evolution from playoff participants to postseason predators or fall into an 0-3 hole. Only experience will get you truly prepared. This is exactly what we thought we were getting, and this is the playoffs in the West. The Warriors have drawn on their collective know-how and talent. That one is sensational! The Cavs may be powered by many, but there is one they follow. One who's been there and leads by example. Look out, here comes James! Game 3's next on TNT. The Cavs and Warriors held serve and now take their 2-0 leads to Boston and New Orleans here on TNT. While an hour from now on NBA TV, the Bulls with a two-zip lead take the bus to Milwaukee for Game 3 against the Bucks. Welcome to Studio J in Atlanta. TNT NBA tip-off presented by Auto Trader Ernie Johnson. Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, Charles Barkley. Uh, so we got the Cavs and the Celtics coming up in a 2-0 series. And uh, here's what Jay Crowder um, is, is saying. Um, and, and you can understand this. He says, look, I think we can win games in the series if we make shots, we limit the bad turnovers, and we take care of the transition game. Um, he also said this. <laughs> no, nobody's on the team intimidating. Uh, we're all NBA basketball players. We're not intimidating. I mean, anybody on the Cavs intimidating? You think, Kevin? Uh, Kenny? I wouldn't say intimidating either. Le LeBron James is not an intimidating opponent. No, I would say that he is a challenge. Or Kyrie. I, if you're an NBA basketball player, the way he, when you're in the league, for us, me looking at him now, I'm like, wow, that's intimidating. But if I was in the league, I would be like, oh, this is the challenge. I'm going to be. I'm going to try to be the best player on the floor. And my, my focus would be better. I wouldn't say that he's intimidating. Would you say that? You know what's funny about it? I, I sit around and watch reporters talk about bulletin board material all the time, and I just start laughing. Ernie, first of all, what sports are, it's the ultimate competition. It, when I played against Shaquille, Hakeem, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, I wasn't intimidated. I want to no, say. But you're a great player, Chuck. It, yeah, no, no, yeah. but I'm saying, but at, as a, this was even better about my point I'm going to make. If I'm a guy who people, like a Jay Crowder, who, like, people didn't think he was going to be in the league, I get excited to see I get to play against LeBron James. Yeah. Like, if you're a great player, it's totally different. You want to prove you're the best that night. But when you're a guy who people are like, well, this guy wasn't going to make it in the league, like a guy like Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas don't care about uh, uh, LeBron, Kevin Love. Kyrie. Uh, he, yeah. He's like... I'm an NBA player. I can get it done. So the word intimidation and bulletin, bulletin board material, I think that's always overused. I have to disagree with you a little bit because, for me, intimidation was my whole thing. The guys that I couldn't intimidate, I had trouble with. Akeem, Tim Duncan every now and then. But the guys I could intimidate, it made the game easier for me. How did you know Nancy that they were intimidated? Oh, I could tell by, by the way they played defense by the comments they made, how they played, the sounds they made when I was backing them down, putting the bow in the net. <laughs> what so, kind of but, sounds did you hear there? Oh, <laughs> eat. But, Kenny, my question to you is Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan, were they intimidating? No. I, I, honestly, Michael was, I think. I, I think, honestly, for me, I, this is just my opinion, I, move, I lean towards that. I was like, yo, I got a chance, because I know the world watches this guy, that I could actually – They're here to watch him. Play well. Yeah. And they'll, I'll get people thinking that I'm a great player. I, I, that's how I used to think. I'm like, this is yeah, my, but I, I used to be like, this is my night. This is my night. You know, LeBron to me is, is more on the Magic jo Johnson side of things. Great player, uh, Hall of Famer, first battle, but he's not really intimidating. Guys are not really going to fear him. But for this, me, I will say this, me, though. People had to fear me. When guys, I'll make sure they had to fear me. I will say when guys you, are you're a great player. Don't you think you intimidated some players? When, yes, he's, ha of course. when he's having a win he's having a great at the night. beginning of the game, you're not, mate. But as the game goes on and yes. you realize you can't stop him, it works. then that's intimidating. It works. Because to me, as an NBA player, you say, I'm an NBA guy and I can't control this guy. So then that's intimidating. But to start out, 
No, no, I, no. Like when, before I became Charles Barkley, when you're like a rookie, you're a nobody. When I when we played against the Lakers or the Celtics, when I played against Bird McHale in Paris, I was saying to myself, I'm gonna let these guys. I, 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 I'm so excited. I want them to know I'm an NBA player. Also, everybody know Bird McHale in Paris. But Charles, you're a great player, yeah. Hall of Famer. But, I, but everybody started you. at the bottom. We all like Drake yeah, in the sure. beginning. I'm sure. I mean, start at only. the bottom. Now we're here. <laughs> okay, who sees who sees Boston taking one in in their gym over over the Cavs? Oh, I do. I do too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You they, see they it play tonight? hard enough. They yeah, play. They play, man. they play smart enough. They just can't beat them four times. But yeah. they play hard enough and smart enough to beat them. But they don't beat. They don't play. They're not good enough to beat them four not times. Clearly, that, clearly, I need to put my glasses on because I don't see it. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I do not see them. The, the Celtics have had the lead after the first quarter in each of the yeah, first two games. Yeah, I know. And how did uh, that work out for them? And, and, well, Brad Stevens says the third quarter has killed him. In fact, they have not had a lead in the second half in the series. Well, hard to win a game. Uh, when that's in play. Oh, way uh, to be a great analyst, Ernie. Thank you very much. Coming right up. <laughs> Cavs and Celtics from Boston. Marv Albert, Chris Weber, Rachel Nichols have it covered. This is for the win. Knowing you found the right car at the right price is like hitting the game-winning shot. Auto Trader. Foul, foul, hard. freeze again. Now, Crowder and LeBron, I don't care who you are, but we're going after this. Defense, we have enough transition points, you know, and uh, we wasn't making shots. You know, and they took advantage of it.